Walking in. It's time to call the the August meeting of the Auburn Planning Commission to order, and we will begin by having the secretary call the roll. Dana Camp here. Nanette Reese here. Robin Bridges here. Warren McCord here. Bob Reitenbaugh here. Wendy Birmingham here. David Wisdom. Joseph Astrup here. Bill Chancellor here. All right, we have a quorum, and uh, I understand Mr. Wisdom is on his way in anyway as we speak. So the secretary, when he arrives, make sure you take note that uh, that he was present. The uh, before we go into the business of the planning commission, let me make a few comments. First, welcome all of you who are here, uh, and is this on? And is is it? Are you hearing me? All right. Uh, we welcome you here and uh, appreciate your interest in in what is taking place in land use planning in the city of Auburn. Uh, we have uh, two ways to communicate at this meeting uh, tonight. Uh, first of all, we have citizen communication, which will be the first thing we will do uh, after I finish this. And that is where if anyone is here wishes to bring something to the attention of the Planning Commission that is not related to an item on the agenda, you'll have an opportunity to come forward and uh, speak to that. In addition, many of the items on the agenda you will see carry a public hearing, and during those public hearings we will open it up for individuals to come and either ask questions or to make comments for or uh, against some items that are the, the item that's on the agenda at that time. And we will make sure that we try to get all the questions answered that you may bring up. We have uh, two types of businesses that come before the Planning Commission most frequently. One is subdivisions. It is the responsibility of the Planning Commission to create the subdivision regulations and then evaluate each subdivision uh, that comes before it as to whether they match the, meet the requirements of the subdivision regulation. It's basically a technical review. It's, uh, if it uh, meets the subdivision regulations and follows all of our requirements and codes, then it is uh, reviewed and approved. If not, of course, we have that authority to uh, remand it back to see that it is uh, made according to those ordinances. The other have to do with zoning changes or zoning issues, and those uh, are advi we're advisory to the city council. So any issue that is here related to uh, uh, conditional uses or to uh, zoning changes will uh, go forward with a recommendation from the Planning Commission after we have our public hearings here and take the input from you as well as our own ordinances, our laws, and case law related to those type of issues. But they will be go before the Planning uh, the City Council with, uh, with a recommendation from this body. So you'll have an opportunity to address them at that time also. The... Uh, so I'll open up the citizens' communication, and is there anyone here that wishes to uh, address the Planning Commission on any item other than uh, that's not on the agenda? Okay, I see no one coming forward, so we'll close that part of our business. Oh, was there a question? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Blair, excuse me. Uh, yeah, if it's not related to an issue, is it related to an issue on the agenda? Yes, sir. No, we'll deal with that then. Okay. You'll have a chance to talk then. Okay. I don't know about the rest of you, but the way the sun is coming in this early a evening through the through the windows and then the lights coming down here, sometimes I I can't see everything. So be oh, patient with us. We're fancy. Look oh. at that. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. all right. Asking <laughs> How about that? Thanks. My wish is your command. Thank you. <laughs> so we'll begin the next part of our our business with old business, and. Um, I don't think we have any old business on the agenda to take care of, do we? We do not, Mr. Chair. Um, I did want to mention oh, yes. if anyone is in attendance here in regards to um, some requests related to a project known as the District at Richland Road, uh, the developer has pulled those uh, pulled those requests um, from this month's meeting that it, they were not on this agenda. Uh, those will be re-noticed and re-heard at the September meeting. So I just wanted to make anyone aware we tried to notify um, individuals who had reached out to us and homeowners associations as well to notify in advance. Thank you. That's right. So that item will not be on the agenda uh, tonight. That brings us then to the consent agenda, which tonight we have three items as well as the packet meeting minutes and the regular meeting of last month. 
Um, is there anyone wish to uh, move to pull any of those items off the consent agenda for discussion? If not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion has been made and seconded that we approve the consent agenda. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 And the opposed, say no. And the motion carries, which brings us then to the next first item of new business. This, out. this request is for a rezoning of approximately 11 acres from rural to development district housing. The property is located at 1287 Ogletree Road, and there is existing development district housing and limited development district zoning in the area. Moores Mill PDD is to the west of the subject property, East Lake to the east, and Ogletree Village to the north. The future land use designation for this property is neighborhood preservation, which is um, intended for development to occur in line with ex existing stable neighborhoods. Um, the DDH zone promotes residential character of a low to moderate density. It does allow four units an acre for conventional subdivisions, five and a half um, dwell units an acre for performance, which we feel is in line with the neighborhood preservation um, designation as well as surrounding neighborhoods. So we do recommend approval of the rezoning. Um, this property is part of a subsequent item for a, the Moores Mill PDD amendment, but this request is for the rezoning to DDH. Okay, so we're um, considering then a request for rezoning from rural to DDH, which is a single family neighborhood designation. Uh, it is, uh, is there anything from the developer that wishes to add to the pr presentation to us? Uh, with, without, uh, if there is none, uh, we'll open up the, uh, the public hearing and ask that if anyone has anything they would like to ask or comment on related to this particular rezoning issue to come forward, sign in either before or after you speak, but we need your name and address for the record. Is there anyone wishes to address this? Yes. <coughs> Thank you. My name is Mike Simmons, and I'm a resident of Auburn. Um, first, thank you for your service. Other than school board, this is probably the hardest job in local government, so thank you for being here. Um, I know these, this is a zoning request, and then there's a subsequent request on this. I want to thank the planning staff for giving us good information. I'm here to um, raise some questions, maybe uh, objections to this, uh, and I want to give a little bit of my thinking. Um, this, as you can see on the map, many of you have been on Ogletree Road, and although consistent with the letter of the law, I would argue it's inconsistent with the spirit of the law. The proposed says somewhere between 50 and 60 units, and if you drive up and down Ogletree Road, there are no properties that have 50 or 60 units on this side. These are single family residential, and you're moving in this case from a rural designation actually to a multi-unit property. That's quite a shift. And so I'm going to argue at first that that is really a dramatic change for the neighborhood. It's not in keeping with the character and nature of the neighborhood. Any of us who've moved out there and live up and down Ogletree, you drive Ogletree from Hamilton all the way out, there's nothing like this out there. It's single family homes all up and down that road. And so any of us who moved there didn't expect this. And again, that's not to say that this is going to be a bad property or anything. It's simply the density of it, the number of units per uh, proposed here, um, as I understand from the documents, and, and the nature of where they are is simply not consistent with, with what's happening um, in the neighborhood. So I, I respectfully disagree with the recommendations of the planning staff here. Um, five specific concerns. First is the expansion of the Moores Mill Planning Development District beyond its original boundaries. As you can see, I guess that's to the uh, geography is not good on this map, maybe southwest left on the map, that original planning and development district is, is constrained. And this represents an expansion um, a little bit further than I think was originally intended, and it, it moves out toward Ogletree Road. There are some concerns that this could eventually lead to an egress through that property. I didn't see that specifically listed here, but several 
citizens have mentioned that. I don't know if that's something we can address here or not, um, and the developers may wish to do that. Secondly, traffic increases with that number of, I mean, we're struggling on Ogletree and Moore's Mill anyway, and the traffic increases with this number of units, you've got to figure several hundred, uh, I don't know what the numbers would be, but if you have 50, 60 units of multifamily, you've got a number of, of um, properties in that coming in and out of that, and that increases the traffic. If you've seen the property, it's got a significant number of old growth trees and a pond and a waterway through it. To put that many pieces of that much of a development on it means you're going to take that completely away, it would appear. I mean, I could, I could be convinced otherwise, but I don't know how you can build there without moving the pond and the, and the creek and the waterway that goes through that property is a challenge as well. So that's, that's something of, of concern. And then back to the, the whole point of you're changing the basic neighbor of uh, the character of the neighborhood with that kind of a development there. So what, what I'm asking is um, a, a couple of things. First, I, I am not questioning the integrity of the developer. I, I don't know anything about them. It's, it's not about that. It's simply about this request, speed of it. I think this is the first time it's come before this commission, if I'm not certain. And that's a very large change in a very quick pace. And so I think there are probably some questions that could be answered with a little more discussion and maybe give, give up some of some more ease at what's happening. So I, I would request potentially that this at least be delayed a bit so we get more information. Not, it, it feels a little rushed, just saying. Um, and I don't think that things like this uh, should be rushed. Um, secondly, I think that the, um, the, the need for this kind of housing in this area is, is not really consistent with the plan. Now, as you know, as you go up Moores Mill Road, up toward uh, where the Publix is and things, there are similar housing. And the planning staff explained to me that this housing would be consistent with that housing. And those apartments or condos or whatever, they're townhomes right up on Moores Mill Road. You can see them in that density. If this is the same thing, then I think we have a pretty good model for what this would be if it's the same kind of proposal, the same density. That's just a big apartment complex. Now, whether it's townhomes or apartments, point is, it's a large multifamily complex. And that's just not consistent with that area. So with that, I want to close and respectfully request um, that this might be tabled for further consideration at this meeting. And again, I want to emphasize, this is not a don't build anything in our neighborhood kind of an appeal. It's simply, let's step back, maybe get some more uh, input from the neighbors and have a conversation about what this might do uh, in the neighborhood and if we could make some changes that might make it more acceptable. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, is there anyone else? Did you, did you sign in, sir? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. Hello, I am uh, Tom Bingham. I live, um, I've signed in and live at 1810 Raymer Place. Um, my property is adjacent to this property. I'll try not to reiterate a lot of the same concerns, um, but to say also um, just a, a lot of people are concerned about this. If you're concerned about this, if you um, show your hands, that, 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 that is a lot of the crowd here um, tonight. And um, I was nominated to come give, give you some of the reasons of, of why. I think it's a lot of the dramatic change that I understand some of the rules and regulations, but to go from rule um, to 50 units on um, 11 acres is dramatic. Um, that is a very big, that is a very big change. This property was um, bought and sold and closed before um, without, and then now asking for this change. I would also very much agree that yes, this being on planning commission is a very difficult job. And um, I know y'all hear about it all the time if people have opinions about what is good growth, what's bad growth and projects they like. And I've heard, our city manager very art artfully explained a lot of the things that someone may or may not like. Um, because it's zoned a certain way, the city may or may not only have so much control of what somebody can do on their property. This is a little different because it, they're asking to do something they're not allowed to do. And to be able to do it, they have to, they have to get a, a zoning approval. Um, so this is something to where you obviously have a very high degree of control of what would be there. Um, one of the things about density, I understand there is a town home community across the street of East Lake townhomes. Um, I think it's a little unfair to 
say, well, we can do this density here by extrapolating to something across the street, when you ought to look at the density on um, the actual properties affected and adjacent to it. That if you look at there has been a site plan, some of the most dense parts of that are adjacent to um, developments that have the least amount of density. That if you're in a neighborhood of single family homes um, with a very low density, that you're all of a sudden going to be adjacent to something with a very um, high density. So it's not like we're just expanding the already existing townhome community a little bit further. You're affecting completely different property um, than that property was affected. And if I remember correctly, when the East Lake townhome and subdivision development, that all kind of came in at one point when people purchased property and that they did that with full um, knowledge. Um, traffic is a big concern. Traffic on Ogletree um, was a rural road. The road has not had that much improvement. It was meant for a certain purpose and it's now having a capacity that's much greater than it was initially um, intended. It's grown a lot. It's going to continue to grow. Um, Parks and Rec is building a large complex next to Ogletree Elementary School. There will be a lot of traffic of people utilizing that. It's a very big need for Parks and Rec in our community of kids to go play basketball, play soccer, play um, all different sports. That's going to increase the traffic already considerably. Um, Auburn Community Church that's been built um, very close to this but all, all, all on Hamilton um, has a lot of traffic. So in an afternoon or evening where the church is having activities, you have park and rec activities, we're gonna have a lot of traffic adding 50 townhomes here is adding 100 more cars to that. Um, that's not to mention other future plans of park and rec that's proposed off Society Hill. Um, the traffic will be a concern, and the concern is not just convenience, it's also a matter of safety. Um, one important note is when school buses come through, um, the East Lake townhomes, school bus can't go in there. The kids have to stand out on Ogletree Road. A lot of the other properties near this uh, the children stand out on Ogletree Road. Um, there is a bike path on Ogletree Road. You may have heard of, there's been a number of accidents just with traffic and, and um, with bikes of, over the years. We're adding to that. Um, I fear for children standing out on the road with school buses, with all the other traffic, and now we're going to add 100 more cars to it, or more than that. And with 50 townhomes of the type they're wanting to build, and I understand there'd be, there'd be nice townhomes, it's likely to have family and children. There are a number of children in East Lake townhomes. A school bus, as it's planned, would not be able to go into this development. These kids would have to stand out on the road. So on the road, you would have kids out in front of this community, kids out in front of East Lake townhomes, all this traffic going to and from schools, and. Uh, recreational activities and the bus is going to stop and kids are going to have to cross the street. Um, that's a concern. I understand there hasn't been a traffic safety study done on this road and area um, in a while. Um, I think that would be appropriate before we get into that. Um, there's right, also. Let me just yes, caution you. I failed to mention that we'd like for you to hold your comments to five minutes. Okay. But <laughs> so wind it up. <laughs> I will. I will. I will wind it up. Okay. Um, one thing is I, this property again was bought and sold knowing what the zoning was. I understand things change. I also, rec I'm not against growth. I'm not against something happening to this property. Um, I have a concern of this particular type of thing. I would, other type of growth might be um, completely fine, but I also think the homeowners adjacent to this, when they bought their property, this was zoned rule. Now, you know things can change. You know property can be developed. But shouldn't you have a reasonable reliance when you buy property, if the property is zoned behind you rule, that it wouldn't make a dramatic change from rule and bucolic and there's two big ponds on the property, old growth, hardwood trees, to all of a sudden clear cut 50 townhomes. That, 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 that seems like quite a, a bit of a leap and, and I will um, conclude my uh, comments there and I appreciate uh, your consideration. Is there anyone else? Yes. <clears throat> um, 
thank you, and I will try to stay under five minutes. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat uh, what these two gentlemen have said, and I, but I agree with virtually every comment that they have made. I represent the East Lake Homeowners Association. We have 220 uh, homeowners and your there. Name? Your Robert name? Stowers. Address? 1729 Glendale Circle. And of those 220 uh, residents, I have not had one person contact me and says, damn, that's a great idea. <laughs> you know, now, I've had many who've contacted me and said, what the heck's going on? You know, we've had rumors that it's Section 8 housing, that there's going to be you know, 80 <laughs> units there. And it's like, you know, hold on. So I went to Max and said, Max, what's the deal? He gave me some information. But the density of that is so much out of character to that old tree east lake corridor if it were the same as east lake townhomes i don't think anyone get would care i think there's 36 homes there on probably a little more than 10 acres but uh it's totally out of character the traffic issues etc cetera, etc cetera. i'll just let you know that we've got 222 residents that are not in favor of it, and they do vote. So that's all I have. It's it's a little unfortunate that both of these, the, 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 the rezoning and then the requested conditional use is on the agenda on the same night mm -hmm. because the, the DDH that he's asking yes. is consistent with what is just uh, north of the property and, and to the west. Uh, the... Uh, Dunham Court, Staples Circle, Raymer, all those are DDH. So the, we're, we're, the, the item right now is our zoning, and is that an appropriate zone for the area? But yes, I know you're, you're concerned about what will be later on the agenda. But, um, <coughs> but for the benefit of the board, right now our only cons consideration at this moment is, is, sure. the, is the zone. Well, and, and I yeah, would I say understand. the zone shouldn't be changed. Okay. Is there anyone else while he's signing it? Yes, ma'am? Yes, I'd like to know. Come, for come forward. Okay. State your name and address, please. Okay. You still put my name right here? Yeah. Yes, my name is Patricia Edwards, or Pat Edwards, and I have a question. The question I had was, why did uh, the resident just get letters today when most of them were going to work today? Uh, the letter was placed on their uh, on their door this morning. Most of them were going to work. So is this going to be the only meeting that they have about this? Uh, uh, no, this will also go to city council uh -huh. with a recommendation from this board, uh -huh. uh, uh, pro or con. Okay. But the requirement is registered letters to those who own property adjacent yes. to this Today. particular property. Uh huh. And those were sent out several weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. So no, I don't know. The one for uh, for nineteen forty. It was this morning after people had went to work. Oh. So oh. I was just wondering why was it so late sent out? You know, was the planning for not many people to be here? Or what was the purpose of it? We we sent them out at the same time. In accordance it's with our procedures, so <laughs> apologize for anyone who did receive it late. Mm. Well, well, it could be that this on the door, on the door. That today. wouldn't have been us. Yeah, no, that would not us. have been. That wouldn't have been the postal service. They send them through the U.S. Postal Service certified mail. Is that right? Mm -hmm. But it's also to uh, adjacent adjacent property owners. Uh -huh. the, 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 the people, for instance, on Morgan Drive, that uh -huh. part of should have received one. And that's, we'll not, that's not what we sent. Yeah. So I apologize if you have not received that. We yeah, sent those out last week. Uh -uh. 
Yeah. Well, the Postal Service has been quite unreliable for <laughs> quite some time, and maybe we need to try another method, but the law requires us to use the, the uh -huh. certified mail. But this is on Goose Hollow, 1940, yeah. but uh, they only got this on the door today. Well, somebody put that on the door of the city. It's not, it wasn't the city. It's not a city. It put it on all of those in the area. Yeah. This morning, people yeah. had went to work, and I was just yeah. wondering, you know, well, why it was handled that way, because usually when I had gotten one that was earlier, yeah. From another property, it was. Well, I assure you, there's no intention on this uh, mm -hmm. possibility of this board okay. or its staff to okay. uh, try to rush things through without people knowing, you know, following uh -huh. the notification processes that is set by Alabama law. Okay. okay. So, so residents on Goose, Goose Hollow would not, not have been notified. Say again? Yeah. The residents of on Goose Hollow yeah. would not have been notified. Yeah. They don't they don't certified no, they don't join. Yeah. Okay, so they wouldn't be notified. So, there's uh, people with Jason. Affect them too, though. Yeah. The traffic yeah. affect all. Let's talk to the. Board. Yeah, let's get. So the idea is is is, if you didn't get a notification mm -hmm. from the city, it's because you were not an adjacent property owner, or the postal service let us down. Correct. <laughs> but it's not our intentions to ignore uh, our notification requirements. We also so, notify okay. all the internal residents of the PDD by regular mail to let oh, them know you? of the amendment. Of the PDD. Correct. Okay, which would be the Moore's Mill PDD. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's being added to that. Yeah, which is places going to be added to it. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Yes, sir. I just like you to know I'm Jim McKee. I'm the president of the HOA, the Bell Castile, which is on the other end of Moore's Mill, in the PPD, I suppose. And I got two letters, so. You did a good job for me. <laughs> anyway. Maybe and and, I, and Maybe I'd just like a clarification. A few years ago, we were up here for some similar type of issues on right behind us and it, it, on the Ogletree property. And our understanding when all was said and done was there wasn't going to be a through street through Moore's Mill that was going to connect to Ogletree. And we wanted to make sure that was still going to be that way. And two, that if anybody else wants to come up and make an exception with property on Old Tree that's supposed to be five acres or whatever it is for single family, if this is an example of that or this is different, for example, if you go down Ogletree and you, the people that built houses, if somebody, and I have property behind me that hasn't been developed, if somebody said, I've got 10 acres, I want to, I want to have an exception. Is this this would this be the same thing because it's on Ogletree? The development that way was is a deed restriction that it could yeah. not be subdivided any further. That does not run with the land on all Ogletree land. Okay, that, that's so it couldn't be an exception. And another question, uh, I noticed in the documentation for this, the mention of golf carts might be a, a used to connect this property to Moore's Mill and some of the other aspects of the club and things like that. So. It, that's a whole issue by itself, uh, golf carts, and I know this is not going to be discussed today, but uh, that's an issue now in Moore's Mill, and I'm not sure I would, I, I, I'd want to discuss that a lot more. Golf, golf carts is an issue in a lot of neighborhoods right now. Yeah. And that's, that's actually a police enforcement issue. Okay. So thanks for your time. I appreciate sure. it. Thank you, Mr. Steele. Anyone else? Leanne Presley. I live at 1703 Fairway Drive, and I represent my mother, who is 86 and lives at 1706 Eastern Court. So this would be right behind her. I do feel like I will repeat, because you saw all the show of hands, and so I'm just going to repeat again. I love the comment that was made because I see the children standing out, and if these homes are going to lend to young families there will be more children standing out that just doesn't seem safe i think for me living where i live we know right now if you're trying to go to downtown auburn we cannot turn left onto moore's mill many of us go around to ogletree so now if we're going to add more traffic to ogletree 
we've already said that we've got the sportsplex, we've got the church. Now, if we're going to try to leave our neighborhood to get out onto Moore's Mill and go down Ogletree turning left, it's still going to be an issue. So I just would like for you to reconsider. It is a beautiful property, and let's just not add more to it. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Just, just quickly again, thank you all for, for being here. Um, just to emphasize a couple of things that have been brought up. Um, I live on 1810 Staples Court, so I have a fence line adjacent to this property. And your name is? Excuse Christopher me? Jones. Okay, thanks. Uh, we've been here for right around 10 years, um, and our expectation of the development of that land is in consistent, you know, alignment with what it's, it's residential uh, zoning now. Uh, I would like to add, so the, the density is something we've talked about, but if you look at the property line and where these units are going to have to go, and I understand they're independent units with essentially zero lot lines, to get that density over that 11 acres, you can still fit it in there, but you're pushing all of that up towards most of our fence lines in our neighborhood. Um, and even though Moore's Mill is a PDD, if you look at the density down around that development, uh, it's very low relative to the northern development up um, off of, off of uh, rock fence. So those, the, the difference in the consistency of this existing neighborhood and what's planned doesn't exist. They're completely different. Uh, types of housing, densities, and everything else. You know, and I think someone mentioned if it was small like the like the East Lake townhomes uh, and more spread out, it would be less of an issue. But when you push all of those up towards existing single-family houses with a low density, you have incompatibilities of density. Uh, and those don't match with East Lake townhomes or the, or the northern ones of the North PDD. Uh, so I'd, I would ask that you take a look at those densities, how they, they mix together and how they don't. Uh, in reading the packet that was sent out in the engineering section, there's a, there's a section that says a step out to the north would be required. I'd like to know what that means. You know, I, I also read that we're going to try to connect Stinson to Goose Hollow and get to the club. Does that mean another road and sidewalks and cutting through properties? You know, there, there are little allusions to things and further development. Uh, the other piece of property just to the north of this development, is that going to be now purchased and throw multifamily housing there as well? So I think there are follow-on questions that I have that, that need to be answered. In addition to the school buses and the kids and all that, we've dealt with that for the last couple of years. And if you all live anywhere near that area, it's, it's a serious issue, and it's going to get worse. Um, I think those are my questions. Regarding the stub house, it's, it's our policy in the city to try to, to create circulation of traffic uh, from one part or the other without, with one part of the city or one part of an area with another without having to go out on the main road. It's just good, that's usually good planning. So that's why engineering uh, reminds us periodically that we need to make sure the stub outs are there for the future development. When the development to the north is, when that property, which is LDD right now, if that property is developed and there's a stub out to it, then there could be uh, connectivity. Instead of having 100 cars trying to get out of one exit yeah. in this new right. development. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk more about for follow-on plans for that uh, that piece of property to the north. My other question is sewer. So I've read that water and sewer is available to this neighborhood. Has it been available to the, all, the rest of the neighborhoods in that area, to the Goose Hollow area? On that water and well? sewer? Yeah. Those, water those and sewer areas is there are on sewer? Water, it's on septic. It's on septic. It's not yeah. on sewer? Okay. Has that been denied in the past, or what's? So we haven't gotten to the to the use yet, but we'll answer that question okay. when we get to. And I apologize it. if I'm mixing the LDD yeah, and yeah, all it's your very difficult. So they're on the same agenda. It's hard to okay, do. that's something I would think we need to be asked okay. in addition to a traffic safety study that hasn't been done in yeah. 2018. I guess we'll deal with that at the. All right, let's we'll add that to your list. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. I'll sign in right after. Okay. Sure. My name is Ronald Shire. Uh, I live on Fairway Drive. Um, I guess the concern really goes around safety primarily. And, and the thought is, and I know you haven't done a traffic study since 2018, but I was late tonight because I couldn't even get out of my neighborhood. Uh, if you do not navigate a left turn coming off of rock fence onto, um, somebody help me out. Oh, no, Ogletree, right? So, or no, I'm sorry, Morris on Morris Mill Road. 
Um, so if you think about on Fairway Drive, there's seven egress points into Fairway Drive alone from all the neighborhoods that are off to the side. So all these cars are flowing out. They just plunked down a beautiful neighborhood right in front of Fairway Drive with these big million dollar houses all over it. And, and th that is now funneling in. And there's only one, two ways out. You can, and it's all on rock fence. So what we have to do often, we don't go to the left down rock fence to, uh, because it's blocked. It, you're just not getting out at any given time. So we do take the right on rock fence and take a left down Ogle Tree to go to the light, sit there, and then come into town. Uh, that, I know that sounds like, whoa, whoa, was me. You know, I don't mean to be that way, but I think in, it's just the safety issues. We're going to add another 100 cars that are going to be turning left on Ogle Tree, and, and very eloquently said before, the children at the school bus stops, and, and a lot of those things come into play. Um, I'm also concerned that, that future planning, um, I know, and the gentleman earlier spoke of, was it about four or five years ago where you guys, uh, there was a proposal to extend Fairway Drive into Ogletree, and hopefully that's been shut down and not going to get reopened, I, I hope. Um, but I, I think the primary issue would be, is it possible, the question before all of you is, it, and not to hurt the, the fine developer here, uh, to, is it possible to limit the land space to single family housing so that they can build big, beautiful McMansions, 20 stories <laughs> tall all he wants and sell them for $5 million and put, limit the size of the capacity of the people that are trying to go? And, there's, and according to that, there's only one egress route into that neighborhood, right? Am I right on that? Right now. Right now. Yes, sir. The plan is to have a stub out. Okay, going north? Right. Yes, sir. Okay. So then, then all that feeds into, again, <coughs> into Fairway Drive, which already has seven feeder points into it, potentially. So just some consideration for the board. I'd love, I'll, I'll happy to come up with other suggestions. Um, <laughs> the, but, um, you know, obviously it's a concern for all these great citizens here. So I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Well, we'll talk about that when we get to the site plan. <laughs> We're still just talking about zoning. Is this appropriate zone for this particular property? That's my question. Can it be zoned to a single family unit? Well, DDH is a single family. In other words, it, whatever type of housing type is built there would have to conform to the single family <laughs> definition that's in our ordinance, which is no more than two unrelated individuals. Yes. Hi there. Uh, my name is Michael Maffa. I live at 1786 Altamont. Okay, I'm a, um, an engineer in public transportation for 29 years. So I know a lot about moving vehicles around where the rubber meets the road. So what I'd like to talk about is actually the next thing on the thing and how it relates to this change in the zoning. Um, you're also going to look at putting in a old folks home right an assisted living facility on that sex triangle a there is that's i think that 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 portion what you're referring to was previously approved in um another iteration of the pdd so that portion has already been approved for the and again that is for the pdd which is the subsequent so, subsequent request to this but it's, it's so that you've already approved it's it's correct it is not on this the parcel in question for rezoning no no i know it's not on this parcel i'm just talking about the effect of having all the workers who are going to come in to work at that institutional facility at the same time you got all the school buses running around. Okay, and and I don't know if you, any of you guys spent any time in, you know, moving um, the infirm, the aged around. They take the little buses, they load eight people up and they're driving all over the place to doctor's appointments and things. All right, but so you need the workers, the drivers, the vehicles all running into that area. Again, you've just added more congestion. Now you're going to add another 100 vehicles. Okay, and if you're going to get the 2.3 kids per home type of thing, you know, you're going to get maybe more than 100 children, all right? Okay, on top of all the workers and everything else that's running around in that congested little area. Any of you guys live out there? Yes. 
Okay, so you've known about Grove Hill. Okay, so you know about trying to go anywhere on a Sunday morning through that intersection at Moore's Mill and Hamilton Ogletree. So this is just going to make it much better. Okay, uh, the other thing is um, one of the things about the uh, not having the fair uh, fairway extend into Ogletree was that it was going to trip a thing that now the kids could walk to school and you're going to have to put in sidewalks all the way down to Ogletree. Does this parcel changing into a into that dense a neighborhood cause that to happen again? Cause what to happen again? Yeah, that you that the kids would be able to walk to schools because it's less than a mile and a half, or you can plan on busing those kids. Well, okay, because we'll you're at least one more bus, one more bus driver, two more classrooms. Okay, so there's a whole a whole follow-on of costs is the point I'm trying to make, and and uh, um, downstream effects of going from the rural. Uh, land use there to the uh, to the, this higher density School land board use. Didn't come in. So that's yeah. what I'd like to say and I, I don't think the neighborhood and the local infrastructure can handle all these extra things that are going to come downstream from putting in that much uh, high density things of what just for, just from looking at their um, uh, site plan that they had in their thing. So I'll, I'll wait till we get to the second thing, and I'll bring up Appreciate pictures of what that actually looks like, because I saw it in well, D.C. School board is we circulate these this packet to the school board, and they review each one of them. That is correct. So they know what's going on, and they have an opportunity to comment. Right. Is there anyone else that wishes to bring something new before us related to this proposal? Yes, ma'am. I've been, I, I live on uh, 1790 Staples. I don't have adjacent property, but. And, and your name is? Huh? And your name is? Oh, I'm, my name is Pam Mashburn. But I, I just am curious because it seems like we moved to Auburn because of the great planning that has been gone, that has happened. Like I love what y'all have done downtown and protecting people from, you know, keeping the college neighbors, all of that kind of stuff. So I guess the question is, you guys have put a lot of thought into this plan, so I, I guess I'm wondering, what is the benefit for the city of Auburn to go away from the plan? Like, I know that someone has, has bought this property and asked it, but what is the benefit for us when y'all already have a, I mean, the plan's great. We all bought here because of the plan. So what is, is it just because somebody put in a request to change the plan, or is there a bigger plan that this helps the city of Auburn? This or it helps with all the zoning, future zoning. We do have a plan, and this uh, designation, zoning designation, conforms to that plan. That's correct. The DDH Which zoning is designation. Medium dis density uh, residential. Yes, sir. So, do we have that plan? Like, there's a bigger plan. There's a big plan. Future land use plan. Yeah, future that's land that's use what plan. you see on the screen right now. So that little parcel, y'all had, it's just that little parcel that y'all changed? I guess I don't understand. The petition tonight is to change that little partial right, parcel. Right, right. But what you see there is the plan with a designated land use categories arrayed in that area. And this was, I think, is on the land use plan, medium to low dense. Low to medium. Yeah. Low, to, low to medium dense. Yes, under the neighborhood preservation feature yeah. land use designation. Right. So 50 is medium? It goes based on the number of units per acre and not overall units, because obviously if you had a very large parcel, you could put in a right. larger number of units, but at a low, lower density. So so 50 on this parcel, is that low or is that medium or is it medium high? It's like the next agenda item. Yes. This is just rezoning, but all of that is talked about at the next agenda item. But, but the, the, the density, the um, zoning classification allows for up to four and a half units per acre. Five so and the five and a half, and a half. Five and a half, five and a half per acre in a performance subdivision, which they could do even as a standalone single family yeah. um, detached subdivision form, mm -hmm. um, which is present in some of the surrounding neighborhoods, 
or um, what they're requesting is, is part of the PDD amendment. Again, in the subsequent presentation uh, will be for a multi-unit development, um, which we'll, again, talk a little bit more about with that one. Yeah, I, I just think that... with the plan. So, okay. So, and then uh, lastly, because I have two, two minutes. So lastly, other thought is, you know, the other townhouses that we have have not, some of those are vacant right now. I just saw one for rent for twenty nine fifty a month. And so <laughs> I'm not sure who's going to buy those. I really worry about us overbuilding in that area because it's not really, having townhouse homes, my parents aren't going to move here because they want it to be flat. They also want a garage. They don't want to have a parking pad to put their stuff. And most families want a little bit of land for their dog and their trampoline and all that kind of stuff. So who's going to be able to, there's not a lot of young professionals that can afford twenty nine fifty a month. Or and that was furnished, so maybe unfurnished is 2500 a month. But my kids that are young professionals, they wouldn't be able to afford that. So I'm trying to figure out, are we setting this up to have a lot of empty spots? Well, the risk are, has to be borne by the developer. In other words, he, he, if, if yeah, he, but the but the result is the yeah. homeowners have to deal if with. If it gets to be a significant that. problem, then we have to obviously uh, deal with that through some. We have only done it once or twice. Had a moratorium till we could study to see how, what our capacity was for certain things. Right, and my understanding is those townhouses that are in the Auburn University Club have not been selling very quickly. So if we start, if the developer is overzealous and starts building these, and they aren't selling, and he wants to change it up. Well, the, my guess is they'll probably start in the back where it adjoins all of us, and then he, he shifts plans. So I just want to be careful because there's a lot of building going on, and I just don't know that that type of building on that parcel is what's really going to sell. So I think we're going to have a lot of, a lot of uh, empty spots, craziness. Just we need, I think we need to think about who's going to be living in there. And we have a lot of townhomes that are selling, that have garages, and that have yards. And those, that, I would prefer that to be there. They don't have to be expensive. I just would prefer to have families that have yards and garages and not parking pads like an apartment. That's all I have. All right, is there anyone else? Yes, ma'am. I will sign in afterwards. Amy Bingham, I'm at 1810 Raymer Place and I am uh, adjacent to the property I, and I just have one <coughs> one last question and that was when uh, the comment of uh, when de determining density is that over the full 11 acres or is it over buildable acres meaning there's more than a few acres that are covered by ponds and waterways so is that consideration taken into account so it would be over the full 11.2 I believe acres um, and in this case I believe again in the kind of second part of this with the PDD request, it's 38% open space as well. So we do, with any development, whether it's a single family or something like this, when a request comes forward, we look at that density over the entire acreage of the property. Okay, so that was just my concerns because the density is very high against the adjacent homeowners because most of the, you're not able to build on the, the, the ponds. Okay, is there anyone else? I see no one, so we'll close the public hearing and uh, deal with some discussion. And uh, one of the primary uh, items pointed out, uh, traffic safety. Let's talk a little bit about that, uh, or more appropriately when we get to the use. But uh, what is the, um, Allison, what does our, our major street plan say? regarding Old Tree Road? We don't have any improvements planned for Ogletree Road. Ogletree Road is a 45 mile per hour collector. Moore's Mill Road is a 45 mile per hour arterial. Uh, so the arterial carries more traffic than the collector. Yeah. But there'll be a, a traffic study on yeah. with associated with this so that maybe that would change. Yes, yeah, so awesome. as part of, and I don't want to get too far ahead, yeah. but as part of the rezoning and PDD, if the PDD is approved by the city council, a traffic impact study will be required to look at the impacts of this new development and uh, I think it's called section A on the overall traffic and the patterns of Ogletree. I think we use a, a mile radius 
So those impacts will be evaluated by the developer as part of the development. Total PDD, what is its current density? The current density for the overall PD currently is 1.28 dwelling units an acre. Okay. And LDD versus DDH, what's the difference in density allowed? Uh, DDH allows five and a half for performance and LDD allows five units an acre. Okay. And our required open space for any development in this DDH is? 30%. Okay. Can we see that other? Uh map that has the zoning in it. Okay, so that's surrounded completely by either DDH or LDD, yes. whose density max is five, or five and five and a half. Right, the East Lake townhomes to the east, the density there is 4.9. Um, Morgan Hills phase one to the south is 2.5. It's 2.5. Okay. Phase two is 5.1, and then the Morgan or Morris is that, Golf is that Club the DD, Is the phase two the DDH area? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the proposed density for this property is four and a half, so four it's in half. line with the surrounding neighborhood. A little bit less. Okay. Okay. We we sort of got uh, conversations on ahead of ourselves in terms of this is the rezoning and we spent a lot of time talking about a use. Uh, so right now our, the issue before us is the, uh, the rezoning from rural to DDH. It appears that DDH is first matches, our, that zone matches our land use plan. DDH and LDD are to the south, north, and west of this property. Uh, many of the people who are concerned about this property live in a DDH uh, zoned area. So what further discussion do you need? Is there anyone prepared to make a motion? I'll move to approve RZ 2023-010. Second. Motion has been made and seconded that we forward this to the City Council with a recommendation for approval. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. And there are none. What is the date and of the city council? September 19th. Thank you. September 19th. Okay, the next item on our agenda is related to something we've been talking about. <laughs> yes, this request follows the rezoning from rural to DDH. It is a, an amendment to the Morris Mill PDD. Um, it will modify area A and create section L for the PDD. The prox map here shows the current boundary of the Moores Mill PDD. Um, it encompasses about 350 acres at the southwest quadrant of Moores Mill and Ogletree Road. The base zone for the PDD is split between DDH and LDD. Mostly residential in the area. There's some commercial um, along Moores Mill Road as well as the Ogletree Village Shopping Center. Across Ogletree is the CVS Neighborhood Shopping Center, and then northeast is Hamilton Place Neighborhood Shopping Center. The plan development district, the master development plan for this will need to be amended as the land area will increase as well as the number of dwelling units. The land area is proposed to increase from 348 acres to 361 acres and the number of units would increase from 445 to 505. The first area to be um, part of the amendment is area A to the north. It's located at 1719 Ogletree Road and the amendment would add two acres to this area in order to increase the neighborhood shopping center use, um, the commercial space in that area. And the second area subject to the amendment is currently not part of the PDD. It is proposed to be added to the PDD, um, approximately 11 acres, and the applicant proposes a 50 unit, multiple unit development on that site. 
this is the site plan for Area A at 1719 Ogletree Road. Um, Logan's circling the two acres that are proposed to be added to the area. Um, the neighborhood shopping center commercial space would increase approximately 28,000 square feet to um, total around 193,000 square feet of commercial area. There was an institutional use and assisted living facility approved for this area, um, I believe back in 2017. And the residential units in this area would increase from 138 to 148 in order to allow 10 units to be on top of the added commercial space. The um, property would take access, it's shown here on the plan, from Ogletree Road and Rock Fence Road in the future. And are there any questions about this portion of the amendment? Anyone? Okay, we'll keep going. Um, next is Area L. This is the property that was subject to the rezoning from rural to DDH. It's approximately 11 acres. And the applicant proposes 50 um, multiple, 50 unit multiple unit development. It would be a townhouse style product. Um, it would be a condominium um, different from a townhouse just in the sense that it's all on one lot instead of individual lots. There would be a curb cut to align with Easton Court um, on Ogletree Road, so those, that's the plan for that. Uh, two staff comments of note, probably the most important ones, are the water resource management comment, um, that wetland delineation will be required, and the engineering comments for a stub out to the north, as well as the required traffic impact study. And I did receive a great number of correspondence um, by email and phone. Most of the, or the concerns included traffic, density, infrastructure, environmental impacts, impacts on school, as well as a number of um, citizens who were opposed to the connection to um, Stinson Drive and Goose Hollow. Okay. Staff does recommend approval of the PDD amendment. Okay, thank you. Developer wish to add anything to this at this time? Brett Basquin, Foresight Group, representing uh, Cleveland Brothers, who's the uh, developers, um, who pretty much developed everything in the uh, Moore's Mill PDD, and for the most part, most of the stuff on this side of town uh, over the last, you know, 25 and 30 years. Um, these are not apartments uh, as... Um, as uh, Amber uh, mentioned, um, just the way that our ordinance is set up, that anything not fees, you know, there's really no other way to call what we're trying to do other than uh, multi-unit. But it will be a, a, um, a townhome type product. They will have garages. They will have yards. Be no different than what these um, neighbors are used to seeing along Rock Fence Road um, and, and those types. So uh, unit sizes, 2,600 to 3,300 square feet. Uh, price points probably gonna be in the 650 to $900,000 uh, range. Um, you know, the good thing on density for East Lake mentioned that, you know, as long as we were less than, you know, a, a density less than them, our proposed density is four and a half. I think Amber mentioned that the East Lake townhomes uh, across the street um, are at four and a half units per acre and the Morgan Hills subdivision to the south of us phase two there is at 5.1 units per acre um, so our density is less than um, some of our uh, abutting neighbors uh, in regards to traffic you know the target demographic here is empty nesters retirees uh, people looking to downsize and don't want to maintain their yard uh, the target here is not families um, it's not school-aged children. Um, it's the older retirees to take advantage of the uh, adjacent amenities with the club and everything else that uh, um, has been developed there um, over time. I, I know that there's a lot of questions in regards to connection to fairway and fairway drive being connected. Uh, there's no connection through here. There's no contemplation of that uh, through this development. 
um, or even in this PDD amendment um, for, for that. Um, you know, all the, uh, through this residential phase, our, the only access point is on Ogletree. Um, as Allison alluded, we'll be required to do a traffic study um, and, you know, per city requirements, you know, streets like this, um, and these classifications will require widening to accommodate turn lanes. So, um, you know, I, I'll go through kind of some of the list and try to cut off some of the questions from what was brought up during the previous rezoning. Um, in regards to nothing like this along, um, along Ogletree Road across the street, we have townhomes at East Lake um, that have been there. Um, Talked about density, um, talked about um, sewer, or was sewer septic. Actually, sewer was extended through the creek, through this site, up through this development um, to serve Ogletree Village. Uh, the, the sewer from Ogletree Village drains down through this and goes right through the middle of this property. Um, uh, and that was done many, many, many years ago. So uh, sewer is available, uh, directly available at the site. Um, in regards to the assisted living, the assisted living in the PDD was approved originally in 2014. It was amended in 2017 to reduce the size uh, of the square footage of the assisted living um, uh, on that. So, you know, that's always been in the plan uh, and has been uh, for some time. Um, I think for the most part that um, that covers, I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have any or uh, address them at the end. Thank you. Boys, this down, any, any more questions of the outcome? Well, if not, uh, we can now open the public hearing. And is there anyone wish to ask any questions uh, or to uh, propose uh, any new information that we haven't already discussed related to this property? Yes, sir. I think we asked this, uh, it's Chris Jones, so 1810 Staples Court. Um, and I don't have a point or something to get a little bit closer here. So I have two questions for it. You said that these lots. Uh, Sir, could you please speak into the microphone? Yeah, Thank you. Sorry. And talk to the Planning Commission. So the developer said these, these are going to be relatively similar to the lots with garages and yard space uh, that we saw. But then we heard you say they're empty nesters with zero lot lines and didn't want to maintain yards. So I'm curious, I think that really reflects that these are not going to be lots. They're going to be very small, uh, very small lot line type type places. And I guess I'm confused, the difference in an apartment and a townhouse, these all share similar walls with multiple units. Is that, is that true? Well, a townhouse is a, go ahead. Sure. So a, a townhouse, nice these are, again, as the applicant said, townhome style looking multifamily units. So. In many cases, you could look at what's considered multifamily and look at what, what is actually a townhouse yeah. and probably not tell the difference. The primary difference is whether they are fee simple and actually own the property that is under the, the dirt and then typically a little bit of yard, driveway, et cetera, um, which is not the case here. Um, so it's not necessarily a, um, well, it is a little bit of a building type. There's a differentiation between multifamily and a, you know, true um, fee simple townhome. So, so a nice looking apartment that the owner uh, owns the lot and it probably has a garage. It's, it's it, nice essentially looking. a condo. Yes. Okay. It, it sounds like they have plans to condo it out. Okay. So, yes. so single family housing that shares walls and, yeah. you know, it's, and it's, but again, for, for our you know, code, it would fall under, mul it would, it would be considered sure. multifamily. Sure. And it would, it would fall under, I get the PDD on the, all the acronyms you guys use. So I guess I have another question. The, the, the back of these, Condos, townhomes, whatever we're going to we're going to call these. How far is that going to go to the fences of all the adjacent owners? How what's that depth? There's a 25 foot setback shown on this plan. Um, the setback required will be one foot for every foot the building is tall mm -hmm. to the eave height. So that is going to equate to what from the back of our fences? So if the building is 30 feet tall to the eave, or if it's 25 feet tall, then it would be a 25 foot setback. 25 if it, feet, all, yes. whole 25 foot. Okay, um, that's awesome. So, and then across that fence, if you take out the higher density 
uh, developments on the north side on, by rock fence, it's 1.7, and this is, you said, 4 point something. 4.5. 4.5, and across the fence is 1.7. So they're, they're two drastically different land use characteristics. They're going to feel very not, different. Is that the no, no, that's not. PDD as a whole was the one point. Yeah, the whole PDD. Okay. But yeah. the townhomes across the street are 4. 4.9. 4. 4. 4.9. 4. Yeah, oh, that's actually, and evenly spread out across the, I think that's yeah, you're, you're including, the 1.7 yeah. includes the shopping center, the, the, all the okay. amenities that are in there. And all the other houses. And if you include that whole piece of land and then look at the, the, the number of dwelling units, that's how you get the 1.7. Okay. Because it's spread out over, what, 358? So, so, the <laughs> overall density that would be permitted for um, 361 acres would be 1,911 dwelling units for the PDD. So I guess my, my I've got two questions. I've got a minute and a half left. So, <laughs> so as I'm sitting on that fence line, looking to the left at this development at four point whatever, and looking to the right into the Moore's Mill section that's directly affected by this, I, what I'm hearing is you guys are telling us that those are compatible, that those are the same types of family housing units, apartments on one side and acre lots on the right. Is that what I'm hearing? They're, they're related. They're approximately they're gonna the, look same the same density. Okay. I, I disagree with that. I don't know how you can make no. that comment. My other question is, Math. when we were talking about the stub out, you're going right through my yard. Where would that stub out go? What's the plan for that? Well, the stub out has, the location hadn't been determined. That is correct. Obviously, we or the developer couldn't just go sure. put a stub out through your yard. Um, that was a comment that um, the traffic engineer, or I'm sorry, city engineer made um, as we reviewed this plan. So ultimately the location of that will be determined um, at some point in the future um, through the permitting process. And as of now, you know, there's no means to go north until someone else acquires and perhaps redevelops that property. Um, and at that time, that's why the connection would be made. Okay. Okay. But now, Brent, I think you said that the square footage of these units would be 2,600 to 3,000 square feet. Yeah. No, I, I said, said yeah, 2,600 to 3,300. 3,300. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. Thank you again, and thank you for the information. That's very helpful. It lays some concerns. We've got lawyers and planners in the room, and you can tell by the language, no offense. <laughs> Density is not the issue here. Legally, legally, using the word Sir, density and code. Your, yes. your name and address. Mike Simmons. Again. Thank you. Yeah, sure, no problem. Eyeballs tell the story. <laughs> look at the lots. Look at the street. Look at the land around. So while you technically are within the zoning parameters of your PDD and your LDD, correct. You're absolutely correct. Four point, five point. Absolutely, you have that absolutely nailed down correctly. Visually, it's not the same. I will argue it's not the same as East Lake. East Lake is, has a berm in front of it and about a 60 foot setback and is surrounded on each side by a barrier. This, if it's correct in the drawing, what is that? pushes up against. I brought pictures. Okay. <laughs> pushes up against Ogle Tree and the lots. So it's not the same, even though technically, to your point, the densities and, and rules match. So there's, we're playing a little bit of a word game here, and I just, um, it's not, um, I'm not suggesting that uh, you're, you're outside of the bounds of legal, because clearly we're in the rules here, and, and, and you have um, created a property that will fall within the rules, but for the other reasons that we've mentioned, it doesn't fall in the spirit. And so you may be a letter of the law, but it's clearly not in the spirit of the neighborhood or the law. Thank you. One of the things we're talking about here, I think, is compatibility. This is where I keep looking. Yes, sir. Uh, Tom Bingham uh, speaking again. Um, there will be children that live here. There's children that live in the East Lake townhomes. There'll be children here. If they wanted it to be a 55 plus community, the law allows for that. Uh, City of Auburn has a 55 plus community. Uh, the developer went to a lot of trouble to make it a 55 plus community. This will have children in it, and the bus will not come down the street. They will have to stand on Ogletree Road that's not getting better. And there'll be children at East Lake across the street standing over. An accident will happen. 
and you have the ability to prevent things. You're, this is a this Ogletree Road's a mess. It's already a problem, and this is whether or not you're going to make it worse. You have the ability to say no. This is this is in your purview to say the zoning wasn't appropriate. I know you've already passed on that. That yeah, only so much of this is buildable. There are two ponds that have been on this property for a very long time that are just going to be gone, and we're going to pave over it and put stuff to the absolute extreme of it because the property is not buildable. And we're going to try to strap in a bad decision after bad decision. And then Ogletree Road is a problem now, and it's going to get worse and continue to get worse until we say, OK, maybe this isn't appropriate. It's not appropriate to have children standing on Ogletree Road today. Adding more will it, it that won't make the traffic go slower. It won't make the traffic. We're already adding um, a new park and rec facility. We've already added a, a lot of wonderful things there. Growth, and I'm not against growth. I'm not against developing this property. But this amount of, of, of whether, it's, whether it meets exactly what you're saying, of whether it meets the letter of something, is completely not appropriate. The point of planning commission is to use your own judgment and saying, no, this isn't appropriate for this site. All these people wouldn't have shown up tonight if this wasn't a highly offensive project. And it's in your purview, it is in your power to say, no, we're, we're, the density here was already bad. They've already had to come back to the drawing board. They wanted to put 62 on there, and now they're at 50. That's not enough progress, not anywhere close to enough progress. It admits on its face that it was already highly offensive. You have the ability to do that. You have the ability to not have school children stand on Ogletree Road. Thank you. Anyone else? Always. You can provide them over here and I'll pass them around to the. Okay. So this was a development. And Do you have multiple copies, sir? Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, okay. 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 So and those yeah. are uh, 2,200 to 2,800 square foot condos, about identical to this type of thing. They look terrible. You end up with a lot line to lot line. Sir, I'm sorry, name and address? Uh, Michael Maffa. Thank you. I was up here before. I signed your thing already. So that's the thing is, uh, you know, I don't think that you want this place to start looking like the East Coast. All right? I escaped the East Coast. I escaped Chicago to come here because of Auburn. That's not Auburn. Okay? And I don't think we should go that way because... You're going to get another guy going to try to do the same thing. Oh, you did it here. That means you can do it there. That means you can do it there. Because that gives you the high density, high, high profit. Because the, the, if you look at the pictures, the houses are built not very well. No. Uh, and it's going to give them big money. There's going to be a lot of incentive to do it. Okay, I don't think you want that in this community. Okay, I've seen it happen. I used to live in Glenview, Illinois. Right, in 92 when we moved in, there was 40,000 people in that town. When we moved out in 04, there was 65,000. Okay, that amount of growth caused such problems, you have no idea for planning. So you don't want to go there, okay, because you're going to end up having to put in extra streets just to handle the traffic. And we talked, and a bunch of people talked about the traffic. This is, and the first kid that gets hit on Ogletree Road standing at a, stop, a bus stop, okay, is going to weigh very heavily on your hearts, okay? I come out of public transportation. I've designed buses. I've designed things for school buses, okay? And one of the most dangerous places for a kid to be is waiting for a school bus. 800 kids a year are killed at school buses, only 20 are killed inside the bus, in bus accidents, per year on average. But 800 die waiting for the school bus. It's still the safest way for them to get to school, but standing out on Ogletree, it's an accident that's waiting to happen. Right? You're just going to make it worse because you got the kids on the other side of the street. 
You're going to add a bunch of kids on that side because it's going to have to be a stop. Okay. And it's just going to occur. All right. I don't think you want that blood on your hands. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, believe it or not, 30 years, you know, 30 pounds ago, I was in the Army, and I used to run up and down Rogel Tree, and I used to get run off that road all the time uh, because there wasn't a sidewalk kind of thing going. And so it is a very high-speed approach. Even though it is 45, I think there's some folks here, and me included, that kind of exceeded that limit when we were late for work. Um, I wanted to ask the committee, is it within your purview to, when you're considering these types of things, Excuse me, sir, name and address. Ronald Shire. Thank you, sir. Fairway Drive. Thank you. Sorry. Um, if it's within your purview that there's uh, stipulations made to do this kind of development, <clears throat> where either the traffic like the traffic study is done before approval, uh, because it, it, you know I wonder if it taints the approval process a little bit because it's been approved. Oh, we did a traffic study. Yeah, there's a little problem here and there, but we'll make it. I mean, if the traffic study can be done ahead of time, and then secondly, um, if there are conditions upon this project being approved, why, i.e., widening the roads, having wider sidewalks, having a bus stop overhead for the children to stand under so they're in one place and they're not running up and down the road, to do uh, a tra an additional traffic light, or there would be stipulations put upon the developer that if you want to do said community or as he said, there won't be, it'll be old folks like me living there. Well, uh, is, make it a 55 or older community. Uh, it, could we do considerations like that in approving and going down this process if you would consider that as a board? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, wait, this lady right here first. Yeah, you, ma'am. Oh. You go. Speak into the microphone. Okay, I'm just leaving. Okay, I was, I'm agreeing with them as far as the traffic on Ogletree because my kids, uh, I'll be over there with them. And I have seen buses with a stop sign out and people being heard when they run the stop sign. It is dangerous. I just want to say how dangerous it is because uh, I have seen this quite a few times when I'm getting my grandkids that. The bus is already stopped, you know, and not putting on brake with the red light. The stop sign is out, and they shoot by like it's nothing. All right, that's all. Thank you. I'm Pat Stewart. I live on Altamont. Um, I had a question about the uh, if, if we do the study and there's more exits needed, how I'm, I'm not understanding where that's going to happen. Will it go, and how that would affect the lots that abut this property? If the, they say a road is needed through there, what happens? Well, the road, the, the traffic study is going to look at the impact of, of this development on the traffic on Ogletree Road and Moore's Mill. Okay. But the negotiations on where the access point, the, the uh, stub north out. north stub out will be will take place between the developer and the city staff right yeah but i think her question is if for some reason the traffic impact study deems the one access insufficient oh. and they need another one is that right is where, that correct yes where what's the most likely place that the additional and that, so that would have to be determined once the study is done uh, we do have curb cut requirements so if the impacts of the development are more than the infrastructure can handle it, handle the <clears throat> size or scale of the development may have to be reduced. And that's something we would get into once the results of the study are returned. So the study is before it's built? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. So after the, the city council, if the planning commission, when the planning commission sends a recommendation to city council, the city council will make a determination to approve it or to deny it. And after that point, the developer and his engineer will then have to comply with all of our design guidelines, which includes the traffic impact study. So those things come after the use has been approved. But they don't get to do any construction until they've met 
all of our requirements. And but if and if another road is needed, the only option is to reduce the size of the building. Is that what you're of the uh, development? Is that what you're saying? That is an option unless they amend the PDD or acquire more land or do something to to mitigate that. And and where would the land if they had to acquire more land? Where would that be? I'm not exactly sure. That's just an option. Mm -hmm. Can we see the map with the uh, surrounding? So, um, what land would be available for them to, to acquire to put another exit? That would be on the developer to try and find that out. And obviously, right. if that was something that was required and they were unable to meet it, no permits would be issued and the project could not move forward. They would have to come back and amend it in order to meet our regulations. Okay. And the, um, the traffic study and the developer do that in concert with the city? The, is the, the developer is working on the, the traffic analysis? The developer is responsible for hiring a traffic engineer to conduct the study. Okay. We review this study to make sure it complies with our guidelines. So they it's not just them providing something yeah. to us and we just accept it. Traffic engineering is a very uh, it's precise uh, and not like we see. In other words, to me, I've got a traffic jam if I have to wait more than one cycle of the light to change before I can turn. I they look at <coughs> more scientific factors, more engineering factors. But Safety, the, yes. But the developer chooses the engineer. Uh, yes. Yes, ma'am. And pays it. Uh, uh, and, and I know. I don't mean to be such a cynic, but you know that to me that is a um, uh, seems self-serving. <laughs> but um, anyway, I just want to make sure that I understand what would happen if if uh, the traffic analysis comes back and there's more roads are needed, and how would it affect us in the that are behind it? And that was my question. Well, Thank it, you. You know, yeah. usually they have to either reduce the size of the project. Or conform in other ways to the to the traffic study requirements, recommendations. Is there anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Um, Laura Grill, Altamont Court. Uh, also, uh, share the concerns that everybody else has brought up. I appreciate the jobs y'all do. Um, I guess my concern is I've heard two different things. I've heard elderly I've heard 55 plus that's a lot of people and these are just my comments you've got and again I understand all those traffic studies but you've got one ingress and egress right there on Ogletree my question is when this abutment because this is all as I understand part of the Morse Mill uh, development so Somebody mentioned earlier golf carts. We all know those are a problem. There's a, they're a problem everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if, if I'm part of the Morris Mill and I'm uh, empty nesters buying a six hundred to $900,000 uh, home and I want to go to the club and eat, okay, or go swimming or whatever, I'm going to turn out onto Ogletree in my golf cart and ride down Ogletree or are there going to be golf paths cut back through here? Well, we said before, okay, we're not going to have connectors over to Altamont or uh, the other streets that, that back up to this. But all of a sudden, that doesn't count. I'm going to open up golf cart paths, and it's going to be like a raceway. Maybe that's not a concern of anybody. It is of mine uh, because we've got nine-year-olds driving golf carts that don't know how to drive them. Uh, you got... 60-year-olds that don't know how to drive them. I mean, wow. <laughs> but, but I think this is, um, I think you've heard the concern from, from everybody here about the density of this. Uh, I don't think enough work has been done to understand the impact of this. Uh, I have lived here for 31 years from Oak Knoll Circle to Moore's Mill subdivision, and it has been nothing. I remember the first day there was huge opposition to the first gas station that went on the corner of Ogletree and Moore's Mill. And you'd have thought we'd all committed the grievous sin. 
but we all went and bought our gallon of milk on the way home. <laughs> That's right. Um, and you look at what it's become now, and I think I think we're getting way, way, way ahead of ourselves. Just my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please say yeah. Anyone else? Well, no. No. You've spoken already on this. <laughs> a question. Okay, a question. This one's going to come up at this. This is because does Alabama have wetlands mitigation requirements? Yes. Yes, yes. yes they do. And they'll have so to comply. You take, there's two ponds currently. Are yeah. they considered wetlands? That's two questions. That's two questions. <laughs> We're not, we have not received the study on the site yet, but that's one of the things that we will verify before um, as part of our development review process. Okay. So we so have... We, uh, I, I we didn't have, know. Yes. Yeah, state Those Environmental and EPA uh, and Corps of Engineers have their own laws. If they can't confi comply with them, regardless of what we say, it's not going to go. Okay. But, if, but we've got to go ahead and act as if they were going to. Okay. I just didn't know. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. It's a new one. Alan Mann. I live at 17 U. Kevin? Yes, sir. Alan Mann, 1762 <laughs> Bell Castell Court. Uh, I wish I had more than five minutes because um, this is a pretty sensitive topic. And I'm kind of in a lot of emotions here. A lot. Of, I'm kind of in disbelief of some of the things I'm hearing from, um, from, from the proposal here. Uh, but I also echo a lot of the sentiments of my APA, right? Um, you know, I have four kids under the age of 11, and I can't imagine having a, a, a proposal like this, putting 50 units, but I guess we're at, I guess we're at 50 units, uh, and then having kids stand on a 45-mile-per-hour uh, road waiting for the bus. How, that is completely insane to me. My wife, she drives the kids around to four different schools, and it's super hectic in the morning. And, you, and that's just us. You can imagine times that by, I don't know how many people are in this neighborhood and this, this, this city trying to get different places. Um, it's going to be very dangerous. I think it's going to uh, change the aesthetics of the area. Uh, you know, we moved from a different, a different town for the schools. Uh, it's going to stretch the schools. Um, you're already at what 28 more my, my seven-year-old's got 28 kids in his class at at uh, early ed um, that's going to stress the teachers out that's going to stress the schools out um, if you're adding more traffic to that area um, you know I think it eventually wh what do you see what are the benefits I'd like to know what the benefits are from the from the engineers and the, and the people back in this I mean Ultimately, I think it's going to affect the city, too, because you're going to have to uh, change the infrastructure to accommodate this occupancy. Uh, it's going to be very dangerous. I mean, if you're talking 50, 50 units and you times that by 600000 that's $30 million. Somebody's making a lot of money there. But it's certainly changing everybody around it. I think it's going to affect uh, the property value. I think it's going to be very dangerous because... Where do you see yourselves in five years? I mean, if you look at Ogletree and, and you have a you have a engineering company, and we all know who's buying it and proposing this, um, buy similar lots that are in the area and doing the same thing, because uh, there's multiple places. There's already places that the same the same person backing all this is building right down Ogletree not even a mile down the road, and they're doing three to five acre lots, um, which I can see, why don't they do that here? But then also you have more congestion when you have, uh, they're building right down there by Ogletree School, they're building uh, the, the park. So you're gonna have more there. I can imagine coming out of this neighborhood on Ogletree trying to turn left. Like everybody's, everybody's discussed already, is, it's, it's gonna be a fatality when you're turning on Rock Fence to Mo uh, Moore's Mill one day and then they'll put up a traffic light. And that seems to be the only way people put up traffic lights around here. Um, so everybody else out of our fairways going to, going right on rock fence, trying to turn left on Ogletree. tree. This way you're trying to turn left on Ogletree. tree. You turn either way you're going on this road. And then you have people biking down the road. I mean, it's gonna be, it's, the congestion's gonna be um, astronomical. It's gonna change the aesthetics of the neighborhood. It's gonna be very dangerous to have kids around. Uh, and for what reason? 
I mean, there's the towns right there by the overlook. Those are empty. Why can't these these proposal, uh, you know, older retirees move in there? I mean, but you want to build 50 of these and get people to, but there's going to be kids there as well. So uh, to me, it makes not, no sense at all. Let me, I let me make one more correction. correction. We're not building them. We don't want to build them. I didn't say you were we're, building. Well, yeah, you said, why would we want to do that? And you're talking to us. We're no, not I'm building not. these condos. I would not. not. Anything to do that, okay? I said the engineers and the pro put people okay. proposing the project. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. <clears throat> okay, anyone else? I see no one, so I'll close the public hearing. And we will resume discussion. Oh. I, I guess I have one rebuttal to some of the comments is that if it meets or exceeds our current subdivision and zoning regulations, we are to move it forward. So yeah. it's not in our purview to, to not do that as city council. And uh, word by law. We, we Stop. We listen. Stop. 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 Well, let's don't get in an argument. We do, and I've been on this board quite a while, and I'm well aware of each person here has as much conscientious concern for our community and our neighborhoods as you do. What we have tried to weigh is the, the uh, property rights of the developer versus the, the impacts it's going to have on the surrounding area and the compatibility, or lack thereof, of, of the neighborhoods. We're to look after the public interest the best we can under the uh, codes and laws that we have to operate. So we're not trying to push anything. We're obligated to review this objectively as we possibly can, looking at the total uh, rights of both sides. Uh, one of the comments I think everybody's talking about the bus stop. I think that the, the school board gets a copy of these and they review every one of them and they know when and what's happening in terms of the land use development in the city. Uh, and I don't know if they would expect someone to stand out on, on Oak Tree Road to wait on the did. bus. They well, then it's that, that's, they've got to deal with that. Sir, is it within the purview of the board to make recommendations to the city council saying, we have reservations, yes, we're, they're within the letter of the law, the developer, <coughs> well. he, he's doing everything to first step. But here are the, the recommendations of the board. Mr. Chair, if we're going to yeah, take we comment, if we could. We can make more recommendations uh, on, on the uh, conditions on this. This is a conditional use in addition to the, to the, uh, the plan. So it anyway. It uh, does not require conditional use performance. Residential right, uses okay. are permitted in PDDs. Okay. I stand correct. But we still can send any concerns we have to the city council. Oh. I have a question for the developer, Brett. Um, any consideration for having a 55 and older community here? I said that was, a, I said that's the target buyer that we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think uh, we would want to restrict it to 55 up. It's, it's a pretty high standard to meet. Uh, in regards, there's only one other place I know in the city that that, that does that. So no, I, I don't think it's something that we're interested in. At this okay, time. there's some pictures over here also um, of what the development was supposedly looked like. Can you either confirm or deny that? I would I would just say, is drive through Moore's Mill and drive through Grove Hill, and drive through Overlook, drive through pretty much most of the development on that side of town. And you can see the standard of quality that these guys do compared to pretty much any of the other developers in the city. Um, I would say is you're showing pictures from the Northeast and we're in Auburn, Alabama. Um, I'm not aware of the Cleveland Brothers ever developing anything in the Northeast, so I, I can't say that, that that's what, what, what they would do. But I do know that the Moores Mill subdivision, the Grove Hill subdivision, uh, Overlook. I mean, I, you, you can name them. You can see the quality that they do. They're pretty much the, their entrances, 
they put more money in and make them look attractive, attractive and, and fit in. Most people are trying to copy their examples of what type of product they put out there. So, I mean, I, I would say that that would be my response is um, they use architectural character. They, they use landscaping for screening as, and, and for aesthetics. They do a high-end finish um, on the stuff that, that they do. Um, and so I would expect them to do nothing different in this particular situation. So, uh, you know, those pictures are just as, you know, it's just a scare tactic of what could be, you know what I mean? Uh, but in reality, I know what, what has been delivered out there for the last 30 years, and it looks nothing like that. So I don't anticipate there to be anything different. Any, any other questions? Thanks, Brad. Comments? Well, I guess I want to address one thing, um, and it's kind of along the lines of the safety issue that's been brought up multiple times. Um, you know, the city has a an approach to, you know, they're looking at how things are developing and how things are growing, and as things grow and develop and they do traffic studies and they, they try to figure out where all the traffic's moving and all that, and then they improve accordingly. So, you know, as long, if the uh, city school board gets involved and they understand what's going on in these areas, they work with the city engineer and the rest of the staff and they try to mitigate these things. We're not here to try and build an unsafe neighborhood. So there's, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of activity that goes on behind all of what we're doing here to, to try and mitigate those problems. So, you know, we're, we're here to make sure that kind of stuff gets fixed as well. So that would be my comment on that. Okay. Anyone else? I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve uh, PC case RZ 2023-011, Morris Mill Plan Development District. Forward to the City Council on the recommendation. Forward uh, to the City Council, the recommendation of approval. With comments. With comments. With, comments. With the comments. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded that we forward the uh, PDD amendment to the City Council with recommendation for approval and subject to all comments. Any discussion of the motion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. No. Secretary, do a roll call. Robin Bridges? No. Dana Camp? Yes. Phil Chancellor? Yes. David Wisdom? Yes. Warren McCord? Yes. Nonette Reese? Yes. Bob Reitenbaugh? Yes. Wendy Birmingham? No. Okay, I think Joe's a stroke. No. Excuse me, Joe. I'm about to cut you out. <laughs> so that's that's uh, uh, three, th three, mm -hmm. no, six, yes. So All the right, the motion carries. The date of city council is September nineteenth. September nineteenth. September nineteenth. Okay. Let's see. Uh, next uh, item of. Oh we'll wait. Uh, yeah, we'll wait. We'll time. wait a few minutes and take a breather. Uh, those who want to leave can leave. It's all good. But I open it. So. She's drinking my water. Oh, she's drinking your water. Okay, all right. Let's resume with uh, number item number six, preliminary plan for Auburn Distribution Center. Who is the presenter? Mr. Chair, I believe we're still waiting on one more to, to return here. Oh, oh one more. Oh, oh excuse me. Yeah. Right. 
you are going to get your chance at this. <laughs> yeah, bear with me for my first presentation. <laughs> Good evening, Council. Uh, for item number six, the agenda, the applicant is re uh, requesting preliminary approval for five lot commercial subdivision. Uh, the property is located at Distribution Drive, east of US Highway 29 South, also known as South College. As you can see highlighted in the black and white, that property is outside of the city limits. Uh, staff recommends approval with comments. Uh, I can let you know what the comments are. If you have any questions, just let me know. Significant okay. comments of note. Uh, yes, so water resource management asked that final plat should include all stream buffers and delineated wetlands uh, to be provided by worm. Planning, engineering, and GIS just had some small corrections based on subdivision regulations. Oh, is there um, anybody from the developer who wants to add anything to it? If not, we'll hold a public hearing on this item and open the hearing. If anyone here wishes to address this proposal, please come forward. My name is Teresa Jablecki Kryle. I live at 1174 Lee Road 20. When you show the map, um, my property is the one that has like a triangle right at the very end of that point of that land. Um, my questions are, how far from my property line will this development be? In terms of the setbacks? <clears throat> This is outside of the city limits, so this would fall under any setback restrictions, et cetera, within the county zoning regulations. What's it state? What's it on the table for the planning commission this evening? Is just the actual subdivision of the property, nothing about how it is necessarily developed. So you can't tell me what the setback would be when it starts forward. No, no ma'am. Okay. That would be a question for uh, for Lee yeah. County. All Thank right. You. So. Um, to ask if there's any green way to be put into this property for development or fence. What about um, how long this development will take? No? no? We will not, the city will not review any building permits, um, et cetera. It will all be permitted through Lee County as well. All right. All right. Well, I guess you can't really answer my question. <laughs> I apologize. I wish I had more okay, answer for well, you. I'll I apologize. Just sign this piece of paper and step down. <laughs> <laughs> is that the Lee County Commission that she? I mean, is, or does she just call the, her questions? Well, she can call the Lee County Engineer's Office. Mm -hmm. They have a building of yep. a building official there that yes. can answer those questions regarding the building setbacks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else wish to address this? subdivision. I see no one, so we'll close the public hearing. And is there any questions that the panel has? Is there anyone prepared to make a motion? I move to approve PP 2023-012 with, with comments. With comments, excuse me. Second. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 And the motion carries. The next item is final plan approval. Yes, Council, the uh, applicant is again requesting final plot approval for a four lot commercial subdivision. Uh, this is the same property as the preliminary plot just spoken on. Um, however, this will be, uh, it's intended that the subdivision to be developed in phases, this being phase one. A 
public right of way is to be dedicated and maintained by Lee County, as you can see, Distribution Drive. Um, so these are the four lots to be final platted, and the southernmost lot and largest lot, lot 2A2, is intended to be uh, developed at a later time. Staff recommends approval with comments. The distribution drive is stubbed out to that. No, that's in a cul-de-sac. Or is that a temporary? Temporary. Temporary. It's a temporary. Mm -hmm. This does not require a public hearing. This is the final plan approval. Is there any? Move to approve PC case FP 2023-016 with comments. Second. Second. Motion been made and with second. comments. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. And the motion carries. Ruskin Hills, phase seven. This request for preliminary plat approval of a 45 lot single family performance subdivision located at the northern terminus of Cantera Court in the Tuscany Hills subdivision. This will be the seventh phase of the subdivision and it is currently zone DDH, which is consistent with the surrounding neighborhood um, that currently exists. Um, there has been a previously approved preliminary plat for this phase that was approved in November of 2020. Um, it has since expired, but there have been no significant changes made to the plat. So planning staff recommends approval with comments. And did we confirm Tuscany Hills versus Stonewood Farms? It is the Tuscany Hills main neighborhood, HOA. Okay. Is there anyone representing the developer that wish to enlighten us any further? <laughs> okay, thank you. This is a public hearing, and is there anyone here wishes to address this particular? There you go. Come on down. My name's John Robinson. I live at 2635 Cantera Court. If this is phase seven of Tuscany Hills, they need an entrance and an exit from Tuscany Hills, not Cantera Court. That's gonna add another 90 cars through our neighborhood that's not very big. That's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? And then I'll close the public hearing. And uh, is there any more discussion? The uh, mm. other other exit. <coughs> it's not really a place to access access. Uh, yeah, I'll let you. Back in 2020, they, this project came available. They were supposed to have an entrance on Sophia Court. There's not one there. Because it, it loops around from, from Stonewood Farms all the way around to Sophia Court, and they stop in the woods. It's just not developed. Will that be in a future phase? Yeah. I think this is the only phase that they can finish. I think that's in phase five. I think that's what order. you're talking about. But this phase seven connects to that adjacent phase. It's not on the it's not on the map yet. Oh. But it does connect. Uh, if you go back to the plat, whoever this is there you go. The road to the left right there is actually going to stub out to Okay. I, the I, development on the other side of the curb. That's what we're just gonna make sure. It yes. seems like since they've been paving the streets and put the curbs in already already, they would have stubbed that out already. That's that's our thing. Yes. If they're gonna do phase seven without a stub, that's gonna create all this traffic for our small neighborhood. Yeah. And that's what we're that's what we're concerned about. That's the reason I'm here. Um, because originally they said that they was gonna have it all the way through. It seems like they would have been done, done that before they finish or even start phase seven. Okay. 
Okay. Close the public hearing if I haven't already. And uh, is there any discussion, questions from the board? Is there a motion to be made? I move to approve 2023-013 with comments. Hey, is there a second? second? Second. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. And it has approved. Now the final plan approval. This is the second request from the applicant regarding Tuscany Hills um, Phase 7 subdivision. It is for, it is a request for final plat approval of the same 45 lot performance single family subdivision. Um, staff recommendation is also approval with comments. Okay. Since this is a final, there's no need for a public hearing. Is there any discussion among the board? Not. Uh, is there a motion? I move to approve PC case FP 2023-015, Tuscan Hills Phase 7, with comment. Second. Motion been made and seconded for approval. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. And we move now to the landings at Academy Drive. Good evening, Commission. This is a request for preliminary plot approval for 45 lot conventional subdivision containing 43 single family homes and two open space lots. Uh, the plot meets or exceeds the requirements of the subdivision regulation and it is zone DDH, uh, which is well below the density allowed in DDH, um, coming in about a little over two dwelling units an acre and that is compatible with the future land use plan. Therefore, staff recommends approval, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any particular conditions? I don't know. Yes, there are conditions. Yes, but are anything significant that would change the trajectory of this? No. Okay. no. What are, how are we distinguishing between conditions comments and conditions. comments these days? Well, <coughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's something that I am... Um, working to kind of get a little bit more consistency on but typically comments are something that just has to be tweaked but is within our regulations and a condition whether it's a conditional use or a pdd is something kind of outside of what our standard regulations would be sometimes if it's something major that involves a piece of you know future city infrastructure or it's you know a, a pretty notable change that will have to occur um we'll, we'll put that as a condition Thank that you. makes sense. All right. Conditions are mandatory. Yeah. Figured that out. Have we, uh, yeah, are you ready to talk about landings? Oh, yeah. That's what it was. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm punch drunk. Uh, all right, so we've, have we got a motion? We have a public hearing, and we've got to have a public, public hearing, hearing on this. Does anyone here wish to address this item, the landings of Academy Drive Phase 2? And there is no one, so we'll close the public hearing. Move to approve PC case PP 2023-014, the landings at Academy Drive, phase two with conditions. Second. Motion be made and seconded. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. And the motion carries. Now the final plan approval. This is a uh, final plot approval, same site and development. Uh, the, again, the subdivision meets or exceeds the requirements of the subdivision regulations. Therefore, staff recommends approval. Happy to answer any questions. No public hearing here. Is there anyone have any more questions about? Move to approve PC case FP 2023-014, the landings at Academy Drive phase two. Appro uh, recommend approval with conditions. Second. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. And the ayes have it. Industrial, mm -hmm. I mean the um, Industrial Development Board of Auburn submitting to us. Yes, sir. This is a conditional use request for an industrial use, uh, specifically a manufacturing facility located at 2575 Innovation Drive. 
property is zoned industrial and therefore all uses, industrial uses are conditional, uh, which triggers this request before you. Um, the request is in line with the future land use plan and the zoning, um, very much compatible from that regard. Therefore, staff recommends forwarding to council with a recommendation for approval. There are no conditions of approval. Um, the site is a little over six and a half acres and the proposed uh, building will be a little over 82,000 square feet for manufacturing. Um, happy to answer any questions you might have. All right. Uh, anyone making any further comments on this one? Uh, they'll have a uh, public, public hearing. Public hearing, yeah. But I was waiting to see if there's anybody from the industrial board. I mean, All right. Any now, questions, uh, yeah. Any, on, yes. There any there questions? Is, there is. Okay. No questions. No. Want to address? You want to address this issue? Public yeah, hearing. This is public hearing. hearing. Public hearing. Yeah, the public hearing is open. <laughs> I'm not healthy, so sorry about that. Tommy and Mary Lynn Grayson, 2532 Beehive Road. Oh, I can't see. We back up to the property. Oh, there, there you go. When the IDB bought the property, I went to Miller and asked to buy 50 feet of woods for, as a buffer. He told me no need. He had sold it to the IDB with a 100-foot buffer. I got twice what I wanted for nothing. All right. Okay. <laughs> year or two ago, uh, they sent me a letter. I called a lady at the, uh, the planning commission, <coughs> and she said, I asked her about the 100 feet. She said, what 100 feet? I'll get back to you. She did in a couple of days and told me that I was right and that the pro proposal had been withdrawn. Now I call, I get the letter, I call, they go, well, there's 50 feet of undisturbed, and then there's 50 feet that we're going to do something on, and I don't know where 100 went to 50, and how they're going to build the end of that building right at the edge of the 50, right, is that correct? Building to the hundred feet. The building is a hundred foot from the fence line okay. from my property. Okay, but that's not undisturbed woods. That's and where where did the change come from? I'm just curious. I don't, I've never read the lease, the sale, but I'm I'm curious and I'm confused, and I would like. Uh, 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 okay. So we'll, we'll get it. We'll get the the direct economic development directors here. You want to? I'll let him address that when you're. Glad you're here. Yes, thank you, sir. Yeah, Mr. Grayson, Mr. Grayson, we talked a little earlier this afternoon. So the uh, the regulation is that the building has to be 100 foot from the property line. Um, the, we are adding the 50 feet undisturbed, so when before it starts the clearing, we will uh, select 50 feet from the property line so there's no disturbance. And then uh, Mr. Grayson had talked to uh, Katie uh, uh, yesterday or so and uh, had asked for some additional buffer. And we've talked to the uh, general manager of the company and we will create an additional buffer uh, close to the trucking area um, so that we have a, a man-made tree buffer uh, a little bit lower because the trees have grown and uh, to create on the lower side additional buffer. And, and to our interpretation, that is exactly what the regulation says. Okay. And we have talked about it, about the, you the use, that now? Mr. Grayson, please go ahead. When you put the 50, I can't see that. When you put the 50, 100 foot of buffer, yes, sir. is it going to go around? Uh, or is it just going to be that property right there? Well, it'll be this property and the property uh, to the west of it where you also have borderline. Uh, so from there all the way to the lake. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it would be both, whatever the next user is, will have the same uh, setback. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, and you're gonna, 
you tell me that the builder was willing to mitigate sound and light? Yes, we have, a, if I can show it on the map, or you can, somebody has that fancy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, where, where you see the, is there a button that I can press? And the top right? one. Can I go to the next drone, please? Can you zoom in a little bit, mm -hmm. please? On the trucking area, on the bottom side. Yes, sir, that's good. So, uh, we're good. <laughs> so, it's <laughs> first time. So we will basically, there will be uh, 100 feet, 140 feet of trees here along this, right along the con concrete edge uh, of this uh, green buffer. Did you see it, sir? Yeah. Yeah. You see it there too? Huh? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's not a working plan. Well, it's going to be hurry for trucks. I think we're hiring. Parking. Yeah, and then so this will this will buffer that section where the trucks are, and then your property line is below the screen. Also. And then we'll carry that further to the west, as we said. Okay. Sure, welcome. Yes, I've had my say. Okay. Uh, does anyone else wish to address this issue? I think so, so I'll close the public hearing. And uh, is there any questions from the board? Is there a motion to be made? Move to approve case CU 2023-019 IBS USA for the city council's recommendation for approval. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. There's no other business that I know of, Steve. Uh, the uh, chairman has Ms. no. Steve. Kevin. 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 As I was going to say, the chairman has no communication because if he did, it wouldn't make sense. <laughs> so, anyway, any, any staff communication? Yes, John, John, or whoever <laughs> the heck you are over there. Uh, okay, then I declare this meeting adjourned.